And welcome back again, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of the Lost Podcast of Titan. A father and son journey through the sci-fi series that unite our generations, where we watch, provide commentary, and come to the slowly dawning horrific realization that it has been downhill since season one. Oh my god. This isn't good. I'll be optimistic. I can't be optimistic. Like, see, like, why did they make season three? Happy, happy joy. Uh, because the fans wanted more Star Trek. And this is what they got. I'd be pissed. This is bad. <laughs> like, there's if, a, there's if, a... if, if you were living back there, would you write demanding your postage back that you spent? That's, on... a, that's a good idea, actually. But yes. <laughs> oh. Because, I mean, like, there are... Season one was good. And season two was, was okay. But this is just... Whoa. There's only a few really decent episodes in this whole bunch. And the, the, the best episodes of season three are just the good episodes, are just okay episodes in season one. It's, it's kind of depressing. Uh, well, if I can add to the overall gloom around here, you know. Okay. Just re I just learned, and I'm surprised I missed out on this, Joanne Linville, who played the Romulan commander in the Enterprise Incident episode, passed away a few, um, a week or so ago. Oh, damn. At the age of 93. Oh. Uh, Leonard Nimoy left and she just had to follow, I guess. <laughs> but, uh... uh hmm? No, just, uh... Doesn't say how she died or why, but she was ninety three. Okay, well, she coughed hard she, once. She she looked she looked uh, healthy in that episode. Oh, in that episode, does okay. All right, that's the measure of health for us. Uh, we're we're all now pictures of Dorian Gray. Is that it? Well, I wouldn't mind. Actually, I wait, would... no, that wouldn't worry. It's it's reverse. It's the picture that gets old, so... Okay, yeah. never mind. I mean, I wouldn't mind being as old as I am now and having the body I had at the age 20. Well, yeah, okay. You can start working out. There, there's those... There's <laughs> think... those... No, there's those videos where those, you know, old people just started, you know, working out and they become swole. And healthy and all that shit. <clears throat> Have you ever seen the uh, movie Seconds with Rock Hudson and uh... Seconds with Rock Hudson? Yes, uh, well, he's John. The guy Frank... who died of AIDS. I don't know. I wasn't there when it happened, but uh, um... no, I have not seen Rock. Uh, I have not seen. Uh, seconds. It looks. Uh, I haven't. It looks like it doesn't. I don't recognize it. No. Well, you might want to try watching it sometime. But anyway, they have. It's just have this uh old man. He has to be in his late fifties, early sixties. Mm -hmm. And he gets contacted by this mysterious organization, mm -hmm. which says that you know with certain treatments and such, they can you know. He you know regain youth and vigor. Uh, through, mainly through surgery and organ transplants mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And he gets talked into it and ends up, you know, we end up with Rock Hudson. And uh, it's, an inc it's one of the creepiest movies I've ever seen. Well, yeah, of course, because in 1988, a heavily contrasted still image from the film's opening credits was the, uh, was the sequence was utilized by English industrial metal band Godflesh. For the cover of its <laughs> self-titled EP. Yeah. Huh. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I imagine that there are people and or organizations that can make me, you know, look young and st stunning again, but I don't know. The... Wait, what do you mean again? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just wouldn't want. There's sometimes the cost, the the liabilities far outweigh the assets. Ah. Uh, oh, and we have uh the lawnmower guy going again. 
Yeah, I'd kind of hope they finished. Uh, they were quiet for a while, but this yeah, the sun has been out for the first time in a couple of days, and so they need to mow the dirt. Hopefully, uh, they won't be lasting very long. Okay. Well, we shall see what happens, and uh, hopefully I can edit out the issues. Uh, but, okay. yep, today, ladies and gentlemen, we are back to Star Trek. God help us. I'm hopeful for this episode, but my, my hopes have been have been burning like a candle. Uh, well, it's 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 going to be better than, although Day of the Dove was fair. Yeah, Day of the Dove was all right. So but, I think uh, it'll be on that level. So we are going to be watching uh, Star Trek for the World is Hollow and I Have Touched the Sky. So feel free to put us on pause and pull this up on your favorite physical media or streaming service. And just come back to us when you're ready. And welcome back and we'll go ahead and get started in three, two, one play dun 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 enterprise is under attack by marshmallows apparently <laughs> no more bot like missile oh we have sulu back at the hill oh hey and and scott and scott is just kind of hanging out There are missiles coming at you. Who cares what's propelling them? Well, I mean, it's such a primitive thing. If they can destroy the Enterprise, it works fine enough. I don't think they can. Or what? maybe they're nuclear. Pew, pew, pew. Well, end of episode. Let's go. We're going to commit exterminatus upon the planet. Oh, and we have uh, Nurse Chapel for the first time yeah. since, uh, what, Spock's brain was moved? I believe so. And this is, I think, her best scene in all of third season. No, she was also in uh uh and the children shall lead. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. I kind of blacked out what? that episode. Where's the lizard on the wall? Oh, I mean it's season 3, they couldn't afford it. Oh. Uh-oh. It's alien something something. Xenopolycythemia. So it's alien, multifaceted... It's something. a blood disease. Ah. Yeah, I, w I would be comfortable with uh, being treated by a doctor who is in the process of dying from a terminal illness. Make him even more cranky than he is usually. But how did he get it? One of those crazy things. I that's a good question. Where's um, the fan fiction for that? <laughs> it's the result of a, a late night rendezvous with Spock. Ah, whoa! Hey, 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 it's Spock Kirk fan fiction. But there has to be somebody who's been making uh, Spock and McCoy fan fiction. Yes, but Spock's blood wouldn't contract because of its chemical nature. Wouldn't contract xenopolycythemia, I'm thinking. It wouldn't be affected by xenopolycythemia. I can't type xenopolycythemia. Oh, Lord. I don't think it's a real disease. I think the word xeno in it was the clue. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, rare blood disease associated with unusual hemoglobin. Um, you asshole, he said he could be on the job. Oh, 
Hello, that's where it came from. Kirk really is dense sometimes, isn't he? Well, he's still digesting the news that McCoy is going to kick the bucket. Wait, no, Kirk can't allow the feelings of sentimentality to get in the way of this shit. Oh, really? Yeah. That's new. He He's had mental breakdowns like, I can't, must be responsible for crew. It's a wandering asteroid. Yeah. It's, it's a meteor. Or it will be soon. Oh. <laughs> On top of that, this isn't really weird. I mean, they just there's a ship that was crafted inside the asteroid. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm willing to bet that the origin of this uh, race was around a red dwarf. Da, 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 da. Da, da. Cold hey, you know, it's cold outside. outside. There's, there's no kind of atmosphere. But, but we're all alone, more or less, you know. In the original uh, filming of this episode, they just recycled footage from the Paradise Syndrome. The Paradise Syndrome. Which one was that one again? That was the one where the planet full of Indians, and they had to deflect an asteroid. Oh, that yeah. Ready. That's right. Kirk went native. Gee, Spock, what in memory did not serve you correct? Give Scotty something to do. Contractually obligated. Yeah. He, he fought to uh, get on the uh, show to stay on it. He's like, I'll, I'll have a f something fuck you to do. God damn it. It's possible. Just one second, I'm sorry. Ah, there we go. Ah. I mean, if you'll recall my... If you recall, I myself suffer from a slightly terrestrial version of polycythemia uh, a few years ago. Uh, uh, oh, that was sepsis. That wasn't weird at all. No, I'm talking about back when I had to spend a week in the hospital getting all my uh, uh, getting blood cells. Pumped into me. Oh, that's right. Oh, this reminds me of uh, uh, the time machine. Yeah. Need some Morlocks to come out and just start, you know, dining. Yeah, they need to start working on technology that could allow uh, movies and TV show episodes completely divergent to uh, be successfully mixed. They have that. What the absolute hell are these people doing when they have swords, but their first attack while they were surprising them was, you know, a double forward lunge with a overhanded <laughs> fist chop. I'm, that doesn't bother me so much as those costumes the guys are wearing. Well, I mean, they had the uh, the Mikado going on down the... Uh, uh, oh, that okay, that's good. <laughs> Three little girls, and that's one of the little girls from school. Oh, oh I thought, okay. You were on the Mikado. I thought, like, this was for Miri. I'm like, holy shit, she grew up.
Okay, she points at the sky, that means let him go. I'm in an important linguistic break. Now, she's yeah. nicely dressed. Well, I mean, you know, she's the one in charge, so she doesn't have to look weird. She doesn't have to use, you know, recycled carpet carpeting. Oh. Well, fuck you, too. <laughs> Did he just grab the... He grabbed the sword by the blade. And he quickly... It would have been neat if he'd quickly put the sword back down and watched the blood coming out of his hand. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Employee lounge at the NBC studio. Wait, it was? No, I'm oh. just saying. Okay. Uh, well, we he looks like one... he has all the coasters uh, <laughs> on the left-hand <laughs> side. Oh, my God. Is he an actual character? Does he actually have lines? Very few have lines, except for uh, our Na friend Natira. Natalia, uh, Natira, high priestess of the people. Played by the lovely Catherine Woodville, who... Other than this is not remembered for very much. Shut up, you're in church. Yeah, and he keeps talking. Looks like uh, you're part of a Doctor Strange fan club. I think it almost looks like one of the other all-powerful computers from an earlier episode. Now, wouldn't it have been interesting if that actually was the case, where they were recycling the all-powerful computers, computers, kind of giving a hint... That uh, like someone was building these computers that was help were helping different species. Yeah, we could we could real we could come to a giant revelation that shatters all of all the illusions we have about the universe and our place in it, and then just forget about it. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we're not ha we're not dealing with an evangelical church here, I take it. No, it's the evangelical church. Well, their, t their method of proselytizing isn't really effective. Well, this is modern evangelical church, so you know this is all uh, a part of the the great storm and all that shit. Oh. But I thought he was doing fine. He's unconscious. He hasn't reco recovered out of unconsciousness yet. I know, but he was uh, early. He was saying that you know he'd be fine until he's lying through his teeth. Doctors make the worst patient. Of course, he does. Fuck. <laughs> it was made in Detroit, along with a certain model. You told him, you bastard. Really? So much for a HIPAA rule. No, no. Okay, all right. The HIPAA rules is to keep the hospital and 
from revealing medical records. It doesn't stop anyone else from revealing medical records. Like, you could tell oh. me that you have a medical condition, and I can tell anyone I want about that medical condition, and I'm not violating HIPAA. Oh. And another friendly fact thrown out to our listeners at That's... Uh, uh, Lost Podcast of Titan at gmail.com. <laughs> I am Nanky Poo. <laughs> I am here. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone in Mad Magazine once wrote a Star Trek parody where all the crew was singing variants on Gilbert and Sullivan's song. Three little ships from Federation lost in a belt of radiation. No shield and no help. Starvation. da 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 da, -da. <laughs> Kirk's got to help us all. Kirk's got to help us all. Kirk's got to help us all. Da -dun -da -dun -da -dun -da -dun. <laughs> well, if you're going to have these spells, maybe we should wait for your nurse to come by and take you back to your room. Yeah, it shows. And he just had to confess that? I mean, we're going to an extreme length here to uh, reveal the title of the episode. Well, I like, I like the poetry of the title. Yeah, true. And it's not a fucking riff on Shakespeare. That's true. You really have a problem with uh, using Shakespeare, don't it's, you? It's lazy. It's like uh, when when someone asks, you know, what's the best movie, what's the greatest movie of all time, and they say uh, Citizen Kane. It's the laziest fucking answer in the history of cinema, and it's also the wrong answer. Well, uh, hum, I, I guess I'll have to file that away for a future reference. Can't say I care much for your church lady, even if you do look nice. Let's not rush things here. <laughs> Let's see what the after hours church specials are like here. <laughs> okay, well, how, how's bingo night there? Wait, did he like collapse on the pillow or the carpet? He collapsed on the carpet, stone dead. Oh, really? It'll disintegrate time... you right away, and that'll take away my distress. Oh, well, thank the Oracle all the hell and back. Is that a direct order? Also, on top of that, could he say that any louder? Better Starfleet regulation such and such and such says in case of emergency, you are allowed to stoop the priest. Well, that's just, that goes without saying. Sorry, it's the COVID. Oh. 
I really shouldn't joke about that. No, don't. Don't joke about that. We got like a, a variant coming. And people still think the fucking thing's a uh, uh, fake. Uh, yeah. A conspiracy to keep it down. <clears throat> oh, I'll bet you will. Mm-hmm. Prepare the baths and the oils <laughs> and the medical sponges. Priestess attend. Priestess attend. That was still a great little bit of writing, considering yeah. DC Fontaine who did both of those. Killed it. Yeah. I thought it was obvious. I was going to say so much for Paradise. Or I would have been more gentle. I love you. Holy shit, really? Wait. This is like 20 minutes. This is this Ooh, is like yeah, red, this is red flag fast central. Moving here. I mean, I I like love at first sight myself. Uh, some of my favorite movie scenes involve that, but come on. McCoy and the male members of the audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's not let's not qualify that right now, lady. Oh okay. well, I mean, yes. I do, I will confess that we're kind of moving this plot point along a lot quicker than... On, on top of that, it's like Kirk, it, Kirk has a way of saying, you know, let me show you the way of love with Earth. And here we have uh, uh, Natira is like, let's just get married. Really? Cut to the chase. Well, it saves a lot of money and uh, time. Well, women apparently do better in the clothes department than men. Well, generally speaking, yes. I mean, the only time that doesn't seem to be the case is uh, like Mad Max. That's true. Oh my. God damn. We're just hitting the jackpot here. You had Nurse Chapel there pining for Spock. You could have, you know, swooped in. And, well, that's ex no, that's exactly the point. Chapel is pining for Spock. Yeah. She had no eyes for McCoy. Oh. McCoy has to pitch the woo. Well, I, if I had to pick McCoy as a pitcher, I wouldn't exactly claim him for my team, if you catch my drift. How dare you? Take him away. Oh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Gazzara. Oh, 
Plus, after a year, hey, guess what? You're back on the market. <laughs> I must be hanging around you too much. I'm getting more callous. Good. My work, my work is uh, <laughs> pursu pursuing according to plan. <laughs> oh, wait. And then suddenly what? Klingons burst in the room. Kapla. One of these days, they're going to encounter an alien race that is like a praying mantis. They bite the bite the heads off their husbands after mating. There would have to be a, a race that follows that, you know, line. Now, I wonder if someone... No, that would, they came up with another story, but I was going to say, that could tie in a lot of races in, in the original Star Trek. Oh, I'm sure that there will be an episode where they do that, you know, pointing to a common ancestor of, of vast and immense power and knowledge who is patriarchal yeah. and, you know, kind and considerate and is fully on board with teaching everyone how, you know, the the lost knowledge and I'm sure they'll never mention it again because and co or coincidentally it shows up in the last uh, season of Star Trek the next generation you want to gamble on that Spock really you are in the control room you doofus Behold the obelisk of convenience. <laughs> I'm going to use that in a story or a novel someday. That's pretty good. The obelisk of convenience. Of convenience, yeah. That mysteriously appears wherever you need knowledge the most. Oh, real! Oh, my God. <laughs> think then, think then, think then, think then. <laughs> Well, who else is it going to be? He is hung like the ancient picture of something we called a horse. <laughs> Except in bed. Definitely in bed. <laughs> Is imagination uh, forbidden? <laughs> or does he leave the whips and chains back on the Enterprise? <clears throat> now, what set off the alarm? Kill them. Dispose of the bodies. I was just thinking that instead of the Oracle, mm. it might have been interesting to have uh, 
the prayer machine that they are using in THX 1138. Ooh. My time is yours. Very good. Can you be more specific? I absolve you. Go out and uh, procure. Back when George Lucas had original thoughts. <laughs> oh, poor George. Oh, po fuck, fuck George. He's got billions upon billions upon billions of dollars. Well, if I had, if I was in Lucas's shoes, mm. I wouldn't mind the money, but I would really hate knowing that my most well-known creation was reduced to a steaming pile of doo-doo on the floor. Well, apparently they're in talks to bring him back for, to uh, produce three more movies. So saith the Doomcock. <laughs> <laughs> Free shout out for Doomcock. Go to YouTube. Type in Doomcock. Maybe we should wear a mask. We are. We well, I mean, technically. Oh, well, okay. Oh yeah, and speaking of the asteroid plotline. Why does anyone go up on the surface? Uh, well, I mean, like, eventually, they would want to, well, that's, that is weird. How are they going to land? They probably have shuttlecraft stored somewhere in the body of the asteroid. Wait, why are they blasting the asteroid? Because it's on a collision course with an inhabited planet. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay, I guess that would be... Yeah. Are they an advanced civilization? Uh, I don't know about advanced, but Spock rattled off the population figure. And oh, that's right, he did, It yeah. was a big number. Eh. They'll recover. Obey the order. I swear he has a pimple on his forehead that I've never point? noticed before. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not a pimple. It's a. Uh, uh, it's something else. There's a name for it. But yeah, we all have oh. little bumps. Well, does this happen to uh, Yonata people at birth, or are they allowed to grow to a certain age before the instrument is inserted, or what? I'm guessing it's like, uh, you know, uh, confirmation. What? And now you can be one with me. Well, hopefully in a, in a less public location. Well, it might be your thing. But there is no one. Certainly don't uh, waste time on marriage ceremonies either. I don't know what was it uh, like the Bajoran divorce ceremony. You uh, sleep with everyone for three days and then uh, break a shared pot and turn away from each other or something like that. Seriously, I must have missed that episode. It was the it's Deep Space Nine episode where. Uh, 
they go to Ryza. <laughs> and it was uh, Julian and... Uh, oh, fuck. The Dabo girl. Oh. Who had been in a relationship. That was when they were uh, breaking up. Its original title was Chicago Mobs of the 1930. <laughs> <laughs> then why do we bother showing him the book? Why not understand before you reach home? And can you still read the language after all these centuries? Well, I would hope so. I would have thought you would have contacted Starfleet anyway. And that sculpture over Kirk's shoulder uh, is a new feature, I think. Help! Always on the carpet. The carpet of death. Stop. See, that's what I was expecting her to do. I would be like, Jim, come bring me back. It's got teeth. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! Back when I had just started watching anime, yes, uh, as a member of the cartoon fantasy organization in Houston, I saw a movie which featured that detail, and I want you to know that kind of put the zap on my head for a while. Yeah, Supernatural Beast City. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. How did you see it? Uh, one thing, I was in the room at the time. We weren't running that film when you were in the room, I hope. Yes, you were. I was playing on the Commodore 64. Uh. Oh! <laughs> Your mother and I are going to be so hauled in one of these days. <laughs> well, there goes the non-interference policy out the window again. Wait, the the thing burned out all the uh, plague in his blood, basically? No. Uh... The removal of the instrument of obedience has broken the vow of marriage between them. Let me show you what love is. Oh. Well, I can admit this, we can make these episodes worse than they already are. Is that this isn't so bad so far? Okay.
built a great ship. Well, admittedly, he's wanting her to accept a pretty big story on short notice. Listen, this woman wanted to marry McCoy in like 15 minutes. Uh, okay. I wonder if they know how to slow roast meat. See, also, what I don't understand is why not just let the people know like why are they why why the subterfuge like they would still be underground That's... i mean would... that is a good point because then they I wouldn't have to go problem. through the whole problem of you know creating a religion and shit unless it was thought they wanted to lessen the trauma of uh generations spending all the time on a spaceship and rather being adjusted to living on what what felt would be a terrestrial environment. Mm hmm. Guards kill the unbelievers. <coughs> Kirk, you are just pants on head retarded. Yep. Yes, but I've also had clogged sinuses. If it were only that simple. They could... Do away with all of this. Just be honest. Wait, they still had communicators. Couldn't they have just beamed themselves and Natira up to the Enterprise and shown her, you know, out the porthole or something? And well, that that is a plot hole. Yes. I mean, because we know that they were able to receive communications through the skin of the planet. Mm-hmm. And speaking of communication to the skin. There must be something in their nature that they accept concepts on such short notice. Yeah. One moment. And the Oracle, and, and they don't understand the Oracle's language? It's the universal babblefish, clearly. Oh, oh okay. Now, this is admittedly a nice effect. Ew. Is this the original effect? Yeah. I mean, except for the asteroid effects, they didn't uh, mess with the special effects on this episode too much. Well, it's season three. They didn't really... You know, uh, who's who's going to watch this far? <laughs> yeah, here it is next to the instructions on building the submachine gun.
And it turns out there's actually a pilot who's been, like, <laughs> uh, forcefully preserved. He's hooked up to machines. Now, I wonder how... Just for 10,000 years. I wonder how the people of Yonada were going to uh, uh, accept the fact when they arrive at their new planet that they and their previous generations have spent all this time on a spaceship unless the Oracle was going to somehow smuggle them down to the new world without uh, them knowing. It wouldn't be, would it? Now here's where having Scott with them would have helped. No, they only had to contractually have him for one line. Oh, okay. Well, that's your job. <laughs> That's her job. Mm hmm You you volunteered to stay. So Paul Simon was wrong. There's actually 51 ways to leave your lover. Hmm. Well, yes. I mean, how can they not know where it's going? Exactly. I mean, he could visit for shore leave. Are you going to contact Starfleet so they don't come wandering? Well, that would be hilarious. And... They're like, all right. <laughs> ba -doo, ba -doo. And how do you know that? Because he's Spock. Well, they would, wouldn't they? Uh, then why isn't the indicator on the far right going to back green. in the normal... Yeah. They couldn't hire the extra to move the little nozzle up. Yeah. 
Okay, it's, wop, wop. the ending is a lot more abrupt than I would would have wanted. Really? But, uh... And also, I mean, they were married. This is McCoy expressing he was lonely. And it looked like he was kind of going along with this. And now he's just going to go back on the ship for over a year and maybe come back after that. To, maybe, uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe, possibly. That's just See, bullshit. It's it's this romance hyphen marriage subplot plus the abruptness of the ending that keeps me from giving this episode an A minus. I'm gonna give it a B, maybe a B minus. B minus. Uh, I'll give it a solid B. It's worth a solid B. Oh, okay. That's a yeah. switch. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I have to, you know, at least give some credit here this is better than the last pieces of shit we were forced to watch for <laughs> that is true true i mean uh, and i checked and i imagine the mccoy and the tira relationship has spawned more than its share of fan fiction uh there was an unfinished sequel to this episode i'm reading here called torment of destiny it doesn't say any more i have to go to a book called star trek new voyages episodes to see how that turned out. Mm. But I couldn't imagine them s- saying, oh, in a year we'll bring you back to the general area of the Fabrini and thank them personally. I couldn't see them saying that and then just letting the whole thing drop. Star Trek New Voyages Phase 2. Oh, damn. Looks like there's a lot, a lot of. Uh, oh, they had another Doomsday Machine episode planned. Ah, uh, Lord. I have to go I don't look know for this if book. this is any good. Oh. But I also do kind of like uh, before before we leave Star Trek, I do actually want to watch with you one of these. Uh, Fan made, please don't sue us. Uh, Star <laughs> Trek episodes. I'd like to uh, to have us sit down and watch the uh, Star Trek Aurora episode, Mud in Your Eye, since you like Harry Mud so much. Was that a fan episode? It was uh, the Star Trek Aurora series. There were two full stories made of this one guy. Tim Vining, I believe the name is. Oh, Lord. I'm looking at these fucking... Th- oh, my God. Uh, CGI. Uh, it took him eight forevers to get those filmed. How? Like, my iPhone can make better shit than this. Was this back in the 90s? This actually, is like... Yeah, actually, actually, yes, as a matter oh. of fact. Well, that would explain that then. But I think... I was rather impressed. And, of course, Paramount... Came in and stepped on him and says, No, no, thou shalt not. Okay. Like, I- I'm sorry, but this is. Okay, hold on. Let me show you. Uh, Hammer. Okay. Like, this is the shit that can be done now. Oh, so, uh, well, actually, this doesn't help our audience. So I'm showing uh, <laughs> my father here, like, a Stardust uh, 40K. Uh, I'll, I'll continue that off air, I guess. But anyway. Okay, well, considering the level of technology at that end, yeah. I mean, at that time. Well, I what I'm saying is I, he could redo it all and make uh, it good wants, this time. If he wants to make... Uh, Paramount mad at him again. Oh, please. Paramount would love to have any kind of good uh, publicity for Star Trek at this point in time. Hmm. Yeah. You may have a point there. Ex- uh, exactly. Young, young Padawan. And like, have, considering... you seen, have you seen the trailer for season two of Picard? No, I really don't want to. Um, like life they, is only so long. Like they, like they need to wheelchair uh, Patrick Stewart onto the set. Like, holy <laughs> shit! Stop torturing this man. <laughs> uh, 
But anyway, so next week or next episode, ladies and gentlemen, it will be the Tholian web. So uh, hopefully this one. Oh, will be really good. there we yes. go. Yeah. And then we have. You know, uh, now I'm actually I'm actually looking forward to that. But but we have to pay for it because after that is Plato's stepchildren, wink of an eye, oh. empath, oh. Elan of Troyus, whom gods destroy. Until finally okay, we I, get to. I do kind of look. I do kind of look forward to Elan of Troyus, and wink of an eye had an interesting premise. But yeah. But then we get to let that be your last battlefield. Yeah. And also, we do have another treat, and we will, I don't know if we'll announce this or announce the movie, but. Uh, yes, look forward for uh, uh, nice development later on. Oh, nice development later on? Okay, so uh, we, we will tease, leave that tease there in the episode. Ha ha. But we will see you next time. <laughs> uh, hope you all enjoy, ladies and gentlemen, and take care. Behave.